YouTube, it's your boy Sam with Tom's Wake Up Boys with another bigger video. You feel me? You see the shirt God got me. Jesus Christ praise none Sam. God got me. Like I said, bro. All praise goes up to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're gonna get straight into this video, man. We got Jalen Hurts. It's surprising people in the NFL at Eagles on TAs. We're gonna get straight into it. Drop a big like subscribe button already. Let's get straight into it, man. Screen record starting three, two, one. Let's get straight into it, man. The first week of Philadelphia Eagles OTAs is officially in the books and with that we've had a lot of different news come out regarding many different players which has gotten fans really excited about this team moving into next season. Now perhaps the most exciting thing to come out of OTAs is in regards to none other than quarterback Jalen Hurts as there are extremely high expectations for him heading into 2023 and there are multiple reasons as to why he could be even better this season than he was last season. And if he is, then the ceiling for this Eagles team gets even higher and we're going to talk all about about that in this video today, so let's not waste any time and get straight into it. So far through the first week of OTAs, we have gotten a lot of new information, whether that be the fact that N'Kobe Dean is going to be calling the plays for the Eagles defense in just his first season starting, the fact that Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith are both shining and have already made great first impressions on the Eagles organization, their teammates, and of course the fans, or the battle for the wide receiver three position between Quez Watkins and Alameda Zacchaeus. There's been a lot more besides that as well. It's definitely been about as eventful as OTAs can possibly get, but of course, when discussing the Eagles and how they've been looking this offseason, everyone wants to know about Jalen Hurts, and that's for very good reason. The guy's the face of the franchise, he's the leader of the team, and he's obviously the most important player on the team as well. The Eagles are only going to go as far as Jalen Hurts takes them, and of course, expectations are unbelievably high for Hurts heading into the 2023 season. And that's for very good reason as well, as earlier this offseason, Jalen Hurts was given what was briefly the biggest contract extension in NFL history at least in terms of annual salary, as he received a five-year, $255 million contract extension worth an yes, average of $51 million per year that's going to keep him under contract with the Eagles through the 2028 NFL season. Now, since then, Lamar Jackson has signed his contract extension with the Baltimore Ravens, which is worth a little bit more annually than Jalen Hurts' contract is, as he's on average being paid around $52 million per season to Jalen Hurts' 51 after he signed his five-year, $260 million contract extension, which is now the new biggest contract in NFL history. However, Jalen Hurts' contract is very unique because of the way that it is structured. Now, I've done multiple videos covering that and breaking it down in the past, so if you want to check those out after this video, you can. But regardless of how it is structured, this is still... The reason I feel like the Eagles are going to be way better than the Ravens, too, is because if you look at the cap hit numbers, Lamar Jackson versus Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson cap numbers are crazy. I believe it's $25 million every single year, including this year, bro. Jalen Hurts cap doesn't touch, I believe, 25 million until like 2026 or seven or something like that, bro. It's like 12, 12 to 15 million for the next three years obviously a massive contract and in turn a huge commitment by the Philadelphia Eagles to Jalen Hurts, especially considering the fact that this deal features the first and only no trade clause in the Philadelphia Eagles history. Eagles history. Yeah. So obviously this shows a tremendous yeah, amount of faith right in Jalen Hurts as a player, as a person, and just the guy that's going to lead their franchise for years to come. And I'm about 100% certain that the Eagles wouldn't make this deal an obviously incredibly huge commitment to Hurts if they didn't have faith in not only his current ability, but also his potential to continue to get better and expand his game. And that's something Jalen Hurts has done pretty much his entire football career. He did it in college, going from being benched in the national championship game while playing for Alabama, even though he had gotten the team to that point, to the Heisman runner-up with Oklahoma just two years later. In his rookie year with the Eagles, he had some nice plays here and there in limited playing time, but he also had a lot of mistakes and definitely showed a lot of flaws in his game. Then heading into his second season and first full season starting in 2021, the Eagles were expecting to absolutely suck in large part because of the fact that no one had any sort of faith in Jalen Hurts. Despite this, despite all the doubt, he came in and made major strides in his game. He definitely cleaned up some of his flaws and ultimately he played really good football for the Eagles in 2021 and he proved to be one of the best rushing quarterbacks in the league while also looking pretty decent as a passer. But there still were some definite flaws in his game that he was going to have to clean up moving forward. And despite him leading the underdog Eagles to an unexpected playoff berth, people still weren't 100% sold on Jalen Hurts as the Eagles franchise quarterback. So heading into the 2022 NFL season, that was really the big question for the Eagles. Could Jalen Hurts become the guy? Could he prove to be the Eagles franchise quarterback? Now fast forward to the end of the 2022 season, and it's safe to say that the answer to that question is a resounding yes, yes as he did some incredible things in the 2022 season. 
Just for starters, he threw for 3,701 yards, 22 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, with a 101.5 passer rating, which is pretty impressive. And on top of that, he also added 760 rushing yards and 13 rushing touchdowns, the most rushing touchdowns by a Philadelphia Eagles quarterback in a single season in franchise history. And he also combined for 35 total touchdowns, which was tied for the most total touchdowns in Philadelphia Eagles franchise history in a single season. And he did all of this while cutting down turnovers and improving his accuracy accuracy, which culminated in him earning a Pro Bowl selection and a second team All-Pro honors. But that's not it, as Hertz was able to take what was perceived as what Sean McCoy would say, it's hard to make an All-Pro team. <laughs> as one of his weaknesses and turn it into a strength and that was his ability to pass from the pocket as he was seen as a quarterback that wasn't able to throw effectively from the pocket but in 2022 he finished first in completion percentage from the pocket with a 72.5 percent completion rate first in passer rating from the pocket with a one look at those stats and tell me he's not a elite quarterback number one in completion percentage number one in pass rating second in interception and touchdown ratio 11.8 rating and second in touchdown to interception ratio from the pocket with a 20 to 4 touchdown to interception ratio. And of course, with all these statistical achievements, also came team success as he led the Eagles to a 14 and 1 record in the regular season in the games that he was able to start and a 16 and 2 combined record with the playoffs factored in. Where he was obviously able to lead the team to the Super Bowl and where they were extremely close to winning the whole thing. And Jalen Hurts also had a historic performance in the big game with the most rushing touchdowns in Super Bowl history with three and the most rushing yards by a quarterback in Super Bowl history with 70 and in addition to that Jalen Hurts also finished second in MVP voting for the regular yeah. season so yeah safe to say Jalen Hurts has drastically improved over the course of his career I mean he went from what a lot of people consider to be a horrible draft mistake by the Eagles to one of the best young players in the entire league and a potential future face of it but as I said earlier the Eagles don't think Jalen Hurts is done improving his game yet now before we continue on with the rest of the video. I just want to say if you are enjoying this video and want to see others like it, make sure you subscribe to this channel on with the rest of the video. So of course, now we're at OTAs ahead of the Eagles 2023 season and Jalen Hurts and the rest of the team are out there working hard to improve their game and a new report regarding Jalen Hurts and his potential to improve his game heading into the 2023 season has officially come out not too long ago as Jeremy Fowler of ESPN said that the Eagles reportedly expect Jalen Hurts to make another quote major jump in his development and they said all I got Jalen Hurts throwing 32 touchdowns this year. Six interceptions a game. 32 touchdowns, six interceptions. I got him 10 touchdowns on the ground for a total of 42 touchdowns for so quote they believe he can be one of these elite precision type pocket passers and this was all summed up in a tweet by Dove Kleiman as well so credit to him now this is very interesting to me because when you look at Jalen Hurts and specifically his 2022 season as a whole he was just absolutely incredible I mean he almost won the MVP award he probably would have won it over Patrick Mahomes if he didn't go down with an injury in week 15 versus the Bears and then in terms of the postseason I mean he obviously led the Eagles to the Super Bowl and had one of the best individual performances we've ever seen anybody have on that stage so how much can you really expect him to improve next year when he's already arguably a top two three four quarterback in the league and done so much already i mean specifically here his pocket passing ability is mentioned as the area where they want to see the most growth from him but again how much better can you expect him to get from the pocket than he was last year when he was already an elite pocket passer well, my guess would be that they would like to see him maintain his level of play from the pocket, but also in a larger sample size than they've seen from him in the past, specifically last season. I mean, it's no secret that the Eagles love to use Jalen Hurts as a runner. That's obviously one of his biggest strengths, and they like to get him out of the pocket using RPOs and let the defenses react to that and make tough decisions. And this is easily one of the most potent things about the Eagles offense, and it also, of course, plays the Hurts' strengths as well. So I'm definitely not saying they're going to stop doing this because, like I said, it's one of the best things about the Eagles offense, but I do expect them to drop Hurts back a little bit more in coverage than they did last year in the pocket because of this report for one, and it's also for good reason that the Eagles would want to do this because it's just the reality that as time moves on and Jalen Hurts starts to age a little bit, using his legs is going to be less of a viable option right. because as the body ages, you become more susceptible to injury when you are taking the kind of beating and the hits that you're taking when you're running the football as often as Jalen Hurts does. Now, obviously, as of right now, Jalen Hurts is still very young. I believe he's only 24 years old still, so he's got plenty of years left and he's going to be an elite runner of the football and they're going to be able to use him heavily in that role. But I do think that the Eagles also realize that if they continue to help Jalen develop from the pocket now, that's going to pay dividends down the road for them because obviously once he starts to age, once you can't really 
use him as heavily as a runner, then he's already comfortable beating you from the pocket. He's already an elite pocket passer, so I think they might just see that as the natural next step in Jalen Hurts' game and the way that he can prolong his career for as long as possible. Now, a lot of that was speculation, but that's the best conclusion I can draw from the report that came out. And who knows, maybe I'm wrong, but I just think that makes a lot of sense. Now, there is another possible way that Jalen Hurts can evolve his game a little bit, and interestingly enough, it is through the use of the checkdown, as Jalen Hurts had the lowest checkdown rate in the league last year, as he only threw a checkdown on 3.4% of his pass attempts. And that may sound good, but the checkdown can actually be an effective part of your offense when you incorporate it in a way that makes sense, and oftentimes a checkdown to the running back is a play that can gain you some good positive yardage and help you keep the chains moving, and I definitely think that when used correctly, this can be a very good option for your offense to have. Now, I think the reason you saw Jalen Hurts' checkdown rate so low last year is because the Eagles weren't really using the running backs in the passing game at all. Now enter Eagles' new acquisition, DeAndre Swift, who could potentially be the perfect receiving back for Jalen Hurts and a great checkdown weapon. And in his report, Jeremy Fowler did mention DeAndre Swift as a potential reason to believe in more growth from Hurts this upcoming season, saying, quote, He's a 50-catch-a-year guy really in his first three years in Detroit, where Philly's running backs only had 23 catches or less. They didn't have a guy with a higher number than that, so they feel like they can get him going in the passing game to give even more easy completions for Hurts. And this is something that I completely agree with. When the Eagles initially traded for DeAndre Swift, one of the reasons I was so excited was because of his receiving ability. I thought it... That's not cool, bro. Jalen Hurts is going to be more elite simply because DeAndre Swift's receiving ability and because his running ability makes with DeAndre Swift, bro. I feel like DeAndre Swift is honestly an upgrade from Miles Sanders, bro. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. I honestly feel like it's an upgrade, but like I said, let me know, bro. But uh, that's gonna conclude this video. Comment your thoughts down below. Let me know how y'all feel about this video, bro. God got me, you know what I'm saying? All praise goes to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Give him thanks, because I wouldn't be here making this video without him, and you wouldn't be here watching this video without him. So give him all thanks. Anytime you wake up, make sure you spend some time with God. Give him some of your time. Listen to the Bible, you know what I'm saying? Or read the Bible if you got a physical copy. The app is free, so we got no excuses for it. And even if you don't feel like doing that, listen to a Bible sermon or something. Just give him some of your time today, bro. But I ain't going to talk y'all's ears off. I'm going to get it out of here, bro. Drop a big like, subscribe if you are ready. If you are subscribed, make sure to post notifications on. Besides that, I've been your boy Sam. Two times I'm going to get it out of here. Until next time I see you, boys. God bless.